Welcome to another episode of Friends of Enlightenment. Thank you guys for um, tuning in with us because I just want to say first thank you to the audience and the listeners that are here following us at Friends of Enlightenment. I have someone for you and you know my habit is to welcome them first. And I know that our guest is coming with a couple of things very expensive that I deem expensive, their time. Time is one of the most precious commodity offered to mankind on this planet. And I say this over again so that in my hope is that you that are listening will understand and recognize the value of time, how precious she is, how worthy of respect and honor that we have to give her in order to understand her value in our life. The other is the journey. The journey has power. It actually has creative power because it created Eric, who he is today. And so we want to thank him for coming and sharing both of these precious commodity here at Threads of Enlightenment. Eric, thank you for coming, man. Ken, excited to be here. Uh, this is a wonderful platform to be able to talk on and, and share my life experiences and uh, see how we can add value to the audience. Excellent. We want to tap into that uh, mind of your and uh, excavate some good stuff out of there. I always ask this question as to how do you serve mankind? Because I keep telling people the prize that we get to experience on this planet is that of a servant. How do you serve mankind? Well, I'd have to go back in and, and think about it, what a mentor told me. A mentor told me there's a great four letter word and it's called help. How can I help you? Do you need yeah. any help? Here's an area where I think, you know, you can gain some improvement through my knowledge. So I, I think my contribution to mankind is helping people become the best versions of themselves, right? And in yeah. order to do that, I had to create the best version of me, right? Yeah. I had to work inwards before I went outwards, right? Because yeah. I want that, that high frequency to resonate and people kind of gravitate towards positivity and a sense of knowledge that maybe I'm protruding and so forth. But I almost have to look back at how I was raised as a kid growing up in Southern California. Yeah. You know, my dad was a machinist. So he built aerospace parts by hand. He taught us how to work on, you know, different electronics and, you know, drill and weld and solder and do all this kind of, you know, hands-on work, right? And yeah. of course we're reading books and studying, but, you know, we're also out in the mountains all the time hiking and, yeah. and going into the back country. And, you know, and, and my mother was a, an ER nurse and a homemaker. So, it was never about really sit and watch TV. It was about, you know, hey, learn to build things, learn to do things with your hands, you know, have that self value. And um, even to this day, you know, my father has a hard time paying someone to do some sort of work that he can do himself. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. And I, that's, I've that's the old school stuff. That. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's so the old school. I, I took a lot of that and said, you know, how can I start applying that towards my life and yeah. learn to be more hands-on, be technical, you know, be thought process oriented. I'm a systems engineer. I designed mm -hmm. supercomputers during the day to solve the world's most challenging problems. And, you know, it, it's a very methodological uh, approach yeah. to designing a supercomputer, right? Yeah. You, you know, and if we think about life, no one really has, in, in my view, a, a mapped out plan, right? Yeah. You, you know, you, you have a certain amount of programming from your parents and then you decide, well, you know, what do I want to go study? What do I want to learn? And then throughout life, you hit trials and tribulations, right? And, mm -hmm. and that's a part of learning to me is failure, right? So just, just experiencing a, a fair amount of failure, but uh, being able to transform failure into a win. I've yeah. always believed that a setback is a setup for a comeback. Yeah, I, I too. You know, I absolutely. And, 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 and along with that, the best project you ever work on is you, right? Yeah. But that goes back to that self improvement. And then once you, you develop that, that inner best person, you know, present that person to the world, right? Yeah. 
and then and then to serve. Yeah, I have a question for you, um, Eric, because I know um, I always uh, go back into that time machine and about the family because I tell people they're in that unit. Things happened there with us as little kids, and you were talking about some of those principles that you were learning from dad and mom about the hard work and uh, working with hands, and you got to hang out. Actually, I think nature is one of the best teachers out there, and um, uh, uh, nature will teach you much if you began to spend time and uh, linger there. It'll teach you. So here you are being exposed to all of that mom and the nursing field. I know my mom was a nursing. I got nurses all around me. Um, and so I understand some of those conversations that you're having in the house with, about uh, what's happening at work. How was Eric uh, growing up in there? What was his, um, what was happening to him as he was beginning to formulate his, his own mind and own uh, programming as he's listening to mom and dad working and uh, existing within that uh, um, framework of family? Well, once, Ken, once I started to learn how things work mechanically, you know, honestly, yeah. I became a little picky. You know, I became picky <laughs> about what I ate. I became yeah. picky about, you know, maybe the type of bicycle I rode or the skateboard I rode because I raced BMX bikes. So I would work on my bike with my father. So it, it helped me understand there are choices out there mm -hmm. and you don't need to go with the worst choice, you don't need to have the best piece of equipment, but if you could, if you could make something that's average better, go for it. Right. Yeah. Cause, cause you know, as a kid, things are expensive and, yeah, um, yeah. you know, it really helped me understand that there's value in putting your own work into something mm -hmm. to make it better. Right. And, and, and to just maybe call it your own in some sense. Right. Versus just yeah. something off the shelf and you take the wrapper off and you keep going. You know, that happens in, in many yeah. scenarios. But, but, you know, anytime I can make something by hand and, you know, get help from mm -hmm. a father or a mother figure or even an older friend. I always had older friends for some reason, too. I just felt yeah. And I learned so much from that, maybe. And maybe in some sense I grew up faster. It's hard to say, you know. Yeah. But, you know, those those times really kind of forged me into who I am today, you know, and it's, it's never taking anything at face value and, you know, what can I do to get the best out of life? Yeah. I love that. I love what you picked up there. Uh, those values, those are pretty strong things. Uh, you mentioned many of them. Um, the fact that choices, the other about uh, helping, asking for help. That's a hard thing. Uh, Eric, for many, especially men, to do, uh, to ask for help and stuff like that. So but you're learning some powerful lessons as you're moving forward. And you mentioned on the onset that, uh, and we can understand that when you moved into college and that stuff, you're looking into engineering because of the background and stuff. When you got there and being exposed to um, the higher, I guess, higher uh, um access to more machines and better quality stuff and all of that, you know, uh, things that you were moving through and, and getting your, your data through studying and, and reading and all that stuff. How was Eric managing himself? Because this must have been a beautiful playground to be able to get access to all this additional stuff as a one who's heading in that direction. Yeah, you know, I quickly became overwhelmed, right? Because you can't, you don't need 10, you know, various element components that do a half-baked job for you. You need one or two really good yeah. components that do the job really well for you. And then you do the rest of the work, right? Yeah. So it was, it was a, there was a time there where I had to really step back and go, how do I not overthink things? but also seek out the best in, in yeah. tooling or electronics or, you know, in teachers and professors and friends. And, and you're all right. I hear a lot these days from men, you know, they're, you know, the question comes up, well, I don't know how to ask for help. How do I phrase yeah. even the question to ask for help? Well, yeah. 
you know, we talked about it a little while ago. First, get rid of the ego, right? Mm -hmm. But also, you don't have to have a carefully crafted message to ask for help, right? Yeah. You can really just go to a professional or a friend or anyone and say, look, I'm lost. I, you know, I don't even know the next step to turn. Here's maybe what I've been doing I think is wrong. But, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of just grounding yourself in, in, an, in an area where you're not going to spend any more time wasting time, yeah. you know. And that's what I felt, too. And then, you know, once I got into studies and upper education and, 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 and so forth, I, I quickly realized, well, this stuff is much more difficult than I thought. I love the fact because you're right, because men, um, we are told differently never, you know, not to, to ask for help or we assume that uh, asking for help, there's a weakness within that, that we ought to be able to do it on our own, all that type of stuff, not understanding the value of collective working and collective learning and bringing someone else's um, perception into the situation also will change things and bring additional insights that you weren't available to unless you bring someone in. So here you are, Eric, you're moving in life, you know, getting forward in your space and so forth. And um, uh, I know you have been, from the conversation, you're dancing close, um, pretty close within the mindsets. Um, uh, the tools are there, you're using them, but it's not uh, mentioned or called mindset training, the, the understanding processes and all these other things and looking for the best and knowledge, bringing in help. All of those things are powerful assistance as you're walking in your life. You're now working, making your money, life is good, all is well. You know, you, you have the ups and downs and whatever. Talk to us about what began to shift in you that caused you to, not, um, to start looking at, quote unquote, the word mindset. How did you get there, Eric? What was the, uh, the things, it's always little threads, that leads to a um, to a crescendo, if you will. And once that crescendo happens, then we began to look, as you stated earlier, on the inside. What was it that caused you to start looking on the inside in your life? Yeah, I think there is a, a shift in in the way I operated, right? Especially coming out of school, and then now yeah. you're doing the work where someone's paying you to get some work done at your mm -hmm. job. Right. You have a certain amount of hours you're there every day. Um, you have to deliver a certain amount of product, a certain amount of yeah. value for whatever company you're working for, or even maybe it's your own company. My mindset started flowing back into waking up early. Yeah. Setting aside time for myself. Right. If I started work at 7 a.m., I got up at 4.50 a.m. Right. I, I focused on health and fitness. I wanted mm -hmm. to internally and, and also physically kind of build the best version of me within yeah. a timely possible time. Sometimes this is difficult. You know, folks say, well, I don't have time to go be physically fit. Well, I don't have time to be unfit is the way I yeah. look at it, right? And also, too, that mindset of waking up early, self-discipline, you know, doing a bit of a workout, having coffee on my time. I was my time. I wasn't running yeah. to get to the office for anyone, right? So that helped set early on in life. You can wake up earlier than needed mm -hmm. to work on you, right? And that also transmitted into my career, right? Yeah. Where I had more energy than most people. I was more mentally focused than most people. Because yeah. I wasn't scatterbrained, right? You know, I was able yeah. to come in and focus. But I also, what it really helped me do, Ken, is focus on execution, right? Yeah. In my yeah. in my career, get things done, right? But step back and get things done for yourself first, so you don't yeah. feel like everyone else is running your world, right? If you're everyone else is running your world for you, pretty soon you're going to get 
burnout, right? Mm -hmm. You hear people talk about burnout all the time. Well, that's because you let people run you all over the place, right? Yeah. You know, that inner self work, when you start off in the morning, or maybe it's something you do during lunch, or maybe your time frame is at in the evening, you got to get it done. And that discipline isn't always easy. Not every day is a good day. But, yeah. you know, Ken, I was doing physical therapy not too long ago at this pretty high-end uh, sports and nutrition place, and they work on NFL players. I didn't know. Yeah. I was just there. I just, I just need to go somewhere close to the house. It just happened to stumble upon a place <laughs> that works on NFL players, right? Yeah. And, you know, these guys are in there. I'm not really asking what team they're on. It doesn't really matter. They're not really wearing their jerseys. They don't care either, right, because they're all from different teams. And one of the guys is on the bench next to me, and another guy on the ground stretching. And the guy on the ground looks, he's like running back looking fit. Like a, like it looks like a, a, a Herschel Walker or something, right? You know, and he goes, yeah. man, I don't, I don't want to be here. This is terrible. And and the guy up on the bench getting worked on, you know, muscular, you know, massage therapy goes, these are the days you need to be here, right? Yeah. This is when it all matters. Yep. And that is the same principle I operate under, and I'm not an NFL player. So if those guys <laughs> can do it and think that way and they're operating at that level – yeah. Why can't we, right? It's, yeah. it's a mental blocker, right? And I think that's the main thing that's helped me get to where I'm at, yeah. you know, is, is just showing up. Yeah, they don't, uh, people don't understand um, the value of um, getting up early and spending time with the self. Um, they really don't understand. They think... It will make them tired, not understanding, no. It actually is the opposite of that. Um, it, it's amazing how you're able to walk through your day much more alert, much more focused, much more um, uh, precise in your things. Because as you said, your thought process becomes clearer, more uh, focused. All of these things are benefits but most society society don't teach that. Um, but like you said, you have to be disciplined. Uh, one of the things I tell people, um, uh, because I grew up in the church, Eric, Jesus said, make disciples, make men and women that are disciplined. It's hard. It's never being a disciple. In anything, being a disciple is simply being disciplined in whatever field you're in. You're a disciple in that field. And so I always tell people, learn to be a disciple, man. Learn to be disciplined um, in your mornings. I get up uh, sometimes like 3 in the morning. If I sleep past like 5 o'clock or something like that, I, I feel like my day has been uh, um, like I missed something. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that uh, morning time my time because that's when i do my meditation and that's when i do all of my stuff in that morning uh before uh my exercise that that's me and then as it gets a little later on in the day then i i made myself afford it to everyone else because but if they understand that one principle eric they would be more powerful than they can ever be um, so here you are, you're getting a chance to see that you're on the path, if you will, as some of these high athletes are with your belief system and your structure in your mind and how you're doing things. Uh, that incident that took place that uh, caused you, because a lot of us don't understand that sometimes a situation come into our life, but it's how you look at the situation. Um, and what you do with the situation that will propel you into uh, the directions that you're going to go. And it's all choices, mindset, and so forth. Talk to us, uh, Eric, because I know uh, reading all your stuff uh, when you had your encounter, um, talk to us a little about that. And how did that come about? Uh, because you'd mentioned you lost a lot of weight and all that kind of time stuff. How did that uh, situation came into your life? Yeah, I suffered from some pretty strenuous back pain, 2016 mm -hmm. through 2021, 2022 timeframe. And 
Some of it was because of, you know, I've been doing different fitness modalities for the past 28 years. I, I studied yeah. jiu-jitsu uh, for the past 12 years. And I've done some endurance-based rucking events where you put weight on your back in a backpack or a rucksack and you do, you know, team sort of events over a five, six hour, 12 hour period. But eventually I just put a lot of pressure on my skeletal system. And mm -hmm. in the early days in training, physical fitness, rest day, you're kind of advised is just to step away from the gym, maybe take it easy. You know, you're yeah. not really advised on what massage therapy is, chiropractic care, bands, stretching, foam rolling, maybe yoga, you know, stuff that really requires the body to stretch and mm -hmm. gain elasticity muscles yeah. per se. So it just ended up being an evolution of more pain, right? Yeah. And it got to the point where it was really hard to sleep at night, tossing and turning and there's no better recovery method than a proper amount of sleep, right? Yeah. So that really started adding up and it was impacting my career, it was impacting relationships and I would go see massage therapy experts, chiropractic care, and I would never really get any traction. It was a short-term fix, right? Mm -hmm. And I knew this was heading down a path of potential surgery and I just didn't want to be cut up. You know, yeah. I, just, I just wasn't going to go see an orthopedic surgeon. So... Um, in the 2021 time frame, one of my chiropractors said, have you heard of stem cell therapy? I said, no. He says, look, because me working on you is a short term fix. This isn't a long term solution for you. And yeah. he had the background in my physical fitness because we trained at the same strength and conditioning facility. I always try to seek out medical professionals that mm -hmm. do some sort of physical activity, right? Because they're going to understand me a little bit better. Yeah. They're going to put their body through some sort of strenuous activity, maybe in the college years or maybe even in current day. But, you know, that really led me down in, um, an area to research stem cells, which aren't really yeah. used in the U.S. too mm -hmm. much. Very little, very little. Because yeah. they're not approved by the FDA for full discovery full application and so forth, right? These are MSC stem cells from the umbilical cord, the beginning of life, right? Yeah, and yeah. I, I kind of told myself, if I'm going to do this, I want the best of the best, right? This goes mm -hmm. back to what we were talking about in childhood, right? How yeah. do you get the best of the best or build it or, mm -hmm. you know, spend a reasonable amount of money, but get the best product, right? Yeah. So... I went on this in endeavor to learn about MSC stem cell treatment and it's not really done in the U.S. So there's the Stem Cell Institute in Panama, there's BioAccelerator in Medellin, Colombia, there's CPI in Tijuana, Mexico, and they all do tier one high level MSC stem cell therapy yeah. and clinical research. And that's because the government of Panama and the government of, of, of Columbia allows this, right? Yeah. Here in the U.S., we don't have that right now. Um, so I, I said, well, who's, who works on the backs? Who's, who's got the expertise in backs? So BioAccelerator in Medellin, Columbia did, right? Mm -hmm. But I worked with a wellness center outside of Austin, Texas, because I knew some people that were training jiu-jitsu and strength and conditioning that were going there. The unique thing about this place is the gentleman running it was a former Green Beret LT 18 Delta, which means he was a wow. medic yeah. in the Special Forces, right? So that's yeah. a different level of medical knowledge than your typical yeah. uh, surgeon has, right? Or mm -hmm. your ER doctor, right? Uh, you know, so we worked together, we got MRIs, and he kind of told me where to scale back in fitness. But he also said, because he did stem cell treatment himself, he said, well, look, uh, I have an interest in you going and, and talking to uh, these, these facilities and I'll review the plan with you if you'd like, you know, because what I can give you here is going to take much longer to get the higher yeah. quality of dosing and much more money than if you just went out of the country and did a five day treatment, for example, right? Which is what I did. So I did the treatment in April of 2022. I had... Mm -hmm three herniated discs. I had 
three compressed discs. I had canal stenosis, is which your vertebrate starts just seizing together. And then the lower half of my back was osteoarthritis, just had degenerative bone disease wow. everywhere. Um, but what was in my favor, though, because this is regenerative medicine, and when I had my, you know, discussions with the clinic and managing, Ken, I wasn't suffering from being overweight. I wasn't suffering from being out of shape. I wasn't yeah. suffering from a surgery that didn't work, right? So I was an ideal candidate, which yeah. was kind of music to my ears. And I was kind of like, well, you know, let's make sure this isn't a marketing play. But I was an ideal candidate because I took care of myself is yeah. the takeaway, yeah. right? And I was an ideal candidate because this is what regenerative medicine takes its best path at working yeah. on rebuilding tissue, rebuilding damaged bones, rebuilding cartilage. Um, but, you know, I was met with a fair amount of optimism from family, friends, and even medical professionals here in the U.S. You can't do this. This is dangerous. <laughs> There's no research, right? Yeah. And there, you know, it's like, well, I've already sought out all the research. I've read books. I've, I've talked to people. I've heard the reviews. And, you know, you know, There's nothing. But I'm validating myself. Yeah. Not from a confirmation bias perspective, right? Because you mm -hmm. can do that. You can you can go look for a supplement and then go look for reviews and people say, Yeah, it's great. And then you're yeah. you're, you're like, you think, yeah, this is this is gonna work. <laughs> no, this is different, right? <laughs> this is a lot of money, you're self funded. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, the big takeaway there is there's a lot of prep work, right? Mm -hmm. I did I had to go on an anti inflammatory diet before even showing up. There was a lot of work yeah. to even get there. Right. Um, and, you know, a year later, after treatment, we did another MRI. The clinic continues to work with me. And what that showed one year later was I had fluid back in my herniated discs. Mm -hmm. All the compressed discs were gone and there were no signs of canal stenosis. Wow. wow. And the only thing awesome. left was, yeah, the only thing left was some inflammation. And yeah. I was working with a physical therapist at the time, and she had a CrossFit background. Again, I'm seeking out, I'm seeking out medical professionals that do fit, fitness, right? And and I asked her mm -hmm. to look at the report and ask, "What's your takeaway?" She goes, "Well, first of all, like you're you're not my normal client." And I'm like, "Well, what's that?" Mean? <laughs> well, you're already in good shape, and you're here trying to just get yourself in, to be better, right? Yeah. I said, "Well, you know, that's okay. I'll, I'll take that, but you know, I don't want any special treatment." You know, yeah. Um, she said, "Well, in the U.S., like in in with what we're trained to do, and she was a doctor of chiropractic care. It's like canal stenosis doesn't get cured. Like, that doesn't hmm. happen. You know. So you know, can the takeaway there continue to seek out more information? Yeah. Right. Don't yeah. settle for what you're being advised to do." Right, yeah. you, you you owe it to yourself because no one's coming to save you, right? Yep. From from a from a person to person level, right? You know, you know, step aside the higher powers and and, 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 and God and so forth. But no one's actually come to save you. You can get mm -hmm. injured. You're going to go to the a doctor for a little while, and guess what? You you got to go back home. You got to go back home and deal with it, right? Oh yeah. You know. You know, you might have a family member take care of you for a little while, but guess what? They need to leave sooner or later. Or maybe yeah. they maybe they live in the house, right? They need to go to sleep. They need like they've got to carry on themselves as well. So I took yeah. the, the I took the this is you know, you you need to go seek out something that's non traditional, right? Yeah. And uh, I tell you what, the two, almost two years later, we did another MRI working with the bioaccelerator in Medellin, Colombia, and continue to see improvements. You know, mm -hmm. um, but the, the, the big takeaway there is, you know, clinics like this continue to work with you after you're far yeah. gone. You know, yeah. And I think now that you know, I've I've got a 13 month old daughter, Ken. And the thing that scared me was you know, with my back injury was not being able to pick my daughter off the ground when she needed yeah. me or when I wanted to, right? Like that Great motivated motivator. me. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, on the other hand, there's pros and cons to being fit, right? Maybe you're, yeah. maybe you get injured because of it or whatever, right? But 
you know, I, I was like, man, you know, the, how selfish of me would it be to have a back injury because of fitness and not be able to help my family in the most part, right? Yeah. So um, that that was a that was a big that was a big step for me. And how um, having having that done because uh, you had mentioned, and I I hope those that were listening were paying attention to what Eric had said. Um, you have to be the one that is going to be um, pushing to gain knowledge. Um, you have to want it. You don't ever settle for um, when someone says that's the limit. That's the limit in their mind. And look at them and, and uh, you now take that information and go, okay, that's their limit. Let's see what else is out there. Always be a seeker of truth. Always be a seeker of uh, additional information. It is only going to make you better in every aspect of your life as you gain knowledge and you step out. And, um, you know, find your compass in your life. Whatever that compass is, um, Eric talked about the fact that he wanted to spend time with him. That is a great compass. You have to learn how to respect and honor yourself and love yourself enough to do the work. And um, if you are not um, in love, you know, I hear the terminology and all people have a focus on is just like the, the spiritual stuff and forget everything else. I'm like, self-love means the whole self, you know, the physical aspect, the spiritual aspect, the mental aspect, all of it. It means that's what you're doing. You're talking and dealing with yourself. And Eric is talking about it. And the one thing that you see with him is that that mind is always looking for additional data so that he can have this outcome. And one of his compass was his kids, his daughter, um, his child. And that's a great, powerful compass. It actually saved my life was I got into a situation and I single dad and what I focus on was my kids. And as a result of that, so find your compass in those dark places where you're at and you'll find your way. And we know that from just just uh, natural things. You have a compass when you're walking in into a forest. You could walk into the densest of forests with a compass and you'll come out. But if you don't have that compass, they... <laughs> It'll take them a while to find you because you don't have anything to guide you. And so that compass, whatever that is, find it. So here you are, Eric, and you stepped outside of normal. I keep telling people about that thing, normal, because every industry has normal. The, um, you have like the, the doctors and all those folks are telling you it's not normal, you know, but you are looking for your data when you're stepping out of normal, uh, that's when you have the less than conversations and you're moving. When you began to gain all of this knowledge, um, Eric, and now you're going to pivot. How did you begin to pivot where you're looking at and saying, hey, I've got all this knowledge, this data, um, I'm seeing systems and all that stuff. When did you start looking at becoming a mindset coach as well as one that is going to help others to learn how to love the self um, and uh, uh, see and pursue the best for themselves. How did that process came about in your life? Yeah, Ken, it was post stem cell recovery and, you know, there was still something left on the compass to do, yeah. you know. I love we, that, 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 um, uh, that uneasiness, um, Eric, that sits inside us all the time and just, uh, for lack of a better word, gnaw at us going, this is not where you, I, there's more I want from you. There is more I want from you. And I love that part of the journey because it's necessary. So talk to us about it. Sorry I interrupt, but I just love that part of it, you know? No, absolutely. You know, because of the treatment and scaling back and jujitsu and fitness, I put on about 20 or 30 pounds more than I needed to. I wasn't really overweight. I was still kind of within, you know, 
it's subjective, right? When you start evaluating yeah. yourself, when you're, you know, you're not at your ideal weight. But, you know, feedback from my wife and then just kind of feeling that I slipped a little bit. I went and hired a, a, a nutrition and fitness coach. Even with all of my background, knowing about macronutrients, you know, how you, you yeah. know, go after a certain amount of protein, protein per day, fats and carbs. I went and hired someone to build a plan for me that I had to follow and then I had to check in and be accountable for every yeah. week. And within three months, I lost 20 pounds, right? Oh. I was back on track. The compass was dead north, right? And, you know, yeah. there could have been magnets all around me, but the compass was straight. You know, it's yeah. like nothing's deterring me from this path now. And I said, you know what? You know, and all, everyone around me is like, what have you been doing? What have you been working on? You know, you look different, you act different. I said, well, you know, I just went and worked on myself for three months, Ken. That's all I did. <laughs> yeah. You know, I went, and, I went and spent tens of thousands of dollars on MSC stem cell treatment outside of the country. But yeah, let's just set that to the side right now. But I came back and worked on me a little bit more because the compass yeah. was still flopping around. The compass was like, yeah, you know, you could go this yeah, way, you could yeah. go that way. But no, I want the compass to point in a solid direction mm -hmm. that I can get out of the forest. Right. Yeah. And that's what I did. So beyond that, what I've done now is I've said, look, when I look around, I see dads out there that need help. I just see in, 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 and women alike, right? We're all so focused on everyday life, winning at everyday life. Maybe it's career, maybe it's raising our, our kids, maybe it's, you know, getting out of our apartment into a house or whatever the goal is, right? Everyone has these goals, but not necessarily knowing how to get there sometimes, right? And, yeah. and you know, mm -hmm. we, we often forget the most powerful vessel is us. Mm -hmm. If you're not optimally tuned to get the best out of your day, the most energy and, and, and you know, the most clear headed, you know, mentally focused person reaching these, these upper boundaries of some of these goals, which may be a stretch goal in some cases, you could just struggle. So I decided yeah. to launch a mindset fitness and coaching company called Energize Dad to help mm -hmm. people become the best versions of themselves, right? To take yeah, my 28 yeah. years of fitness experience, 12 years jujitsu on the mats, you know, strength and conditioning, CrossFit, and, you know, I spent time being a CrossFit judge as well, judging competitions, and then my background in nutrition. How can I help everyday person get off the couch, back off of the excuses, drop the ego, and say, look, I'm going to hold you accountable. Here's your plan. You're going to check in with me. I'm going to advise you along the way how to get better. But also, Ken, the idea is to teach lifelong goals or, and, yeah. and skills, right? You know, because yeah. it's easy to reach a weight loss goal, right? But what I found is mm -hmm. if people don't have set a value towards the goal, mm -hmm. like if someone wants to lose 10 pounds, right? And, and the goal is to go on a holiday trip or a you know, some sort of island trip or something. Well, that, what happens after the trip is gone, right? Yeah. But you need a real value associated with your goal, right? Because that's going to help you see in the process yeah. to make sure that that is an achievable goal. And then when you get there, you're going to value the goal, right? So that's, that's what I'm doing now is helping people become the best version of themselves. I recently trained my brother. My brother's on the program. He lost 27 pounds in three months, or well, mm. approximately four months. 20 pounds in, in the first three, and then, and then another seven. So, and, and we're working side by side, you know? And you, that might be a more challenging aspect is training a family member, you know? Yeah. And, you know, I like helping people, like we talked at the beginning of the show, right? Mm -hmm. There's a great four letter word, it's called help. Yeah. You know, how can I help you? you know? And also for the men and women that don't really don't know how to ask the question to get help, you don't need a well formulated problem statement you know, to go seek out help. But also, yeah. can yeah. I see it a lot, even with friends that they're, they, you know, they're, they're inspired by what I'm doing and they know they want to lose some weight and you know, get in some sort of fitness, you know, modality. But 
they'll say, well, you know, hey, Eric, I'm going to go search this on the Internet and come up with a plan. Okay, well, what happened to the plan that got you where you're at? Your plan sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> you can't even hold yourself accountable to get better you know <laughs> you're gonna go out and like come up with a plan on the internet which they're out there right let's not get yeah, let's not yeah. let's not create any fallacies right but but if you don't yeah. have someone to hold you accountable especially if you can't hold yourself accountable like yeah. coming up with a plan you know and and, and, and and trying to execute it without the right amount of knowledge like don't waste time. You know, we talked yeah. about this earlier, right? Time is, is something we don't get back. Yes. Yeah. There's redos and do-overs and things like that, right? But, I, you know, at a certain point in your life, you're probably better off hiring someone that operates at several levels above you to get yeah. you where you need to be, but also teach you skills that you can walk away with, right? Um so that's that's the focus nowadays is just to really help people become the best versions of themselves, learn about the basic benefits of fitness, the discipline fitness requires, and how it you know extrapolates into other areas of your life. And no, you don't need to go to the gym five days a week. You don't need to do some sort of CrossFit activity all the time and do something strenuous. You can literally go train two to three days a week and 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 create a life of longevity with good yeah. you know yep. nutrition with the right knowledge and guidance and, yeah yeah you know and, and guys so, you're listening you you have someone in eric who, who knows the you have to even with weight training and stuff like that if you don't know the right body mechanics something like that can cause you injuries that will cause you tremendous amount of dis-ease in your life. All of those things. And you have someone, and you guys that are listening to us, if you don't know how to help, uh, ask for help, just email Eric. I, I was listening to you guys, and, you know, I'm not sure or whatever. And I'm sure he's going to probably type, type back and say, how can I help you? <laughs> and so... Once you have that, and uh, I remember in sales, they trained us to ask for help, especially when we were at certain areas and people love to help. It's human nature that their defenses will drop and then they'll find a way to try and help you. Just humans love helping. And that's why you see when someone is in need and the, uh, the need is great, you'll see people coming from all over the world trying to bring help uh, because we know that there are times in our life that we need that. But what you have in Aaron is someone that has a wealth of knowledge and nutrition, he mentioned. Nutrition is uh, necessary when you are approaching a... Um, and you shouldn't be hunting diets. You need to learn about a lifestyle, changing one's lifestyle and in order to change a lifestyle you need to have the right mindset because this is going to be a lifestyle versus a diet as eric said you could lose 10 pounds in, in three days by not uh, uh doing a couple of things you know just eating how you regulate and eat your food it's over and you're done but like you said after you come back uh what type of lifestyle you had is what you're going to go back so don't go and chase diets. Talk to, sit down and talk to yourself. And like, I believe that uh, the reason why a lot of those guys, they'll go, and most of us think with the, uh, the natural brain, the mind, but very few of us tap into the subconscious mind. And I believe that when we make that decision in the subconscious mind, it activates this, the, the hunting for data the hunting for more information. But this guy here is superficial. He will be, he, I'll do it, and then he could be distracted, and then five minutes, he forgot what he, he said. But when that man makes a decision here in his subconscious mind, he will go and call people like, like Eric. And that's who I want to, I'm talking to right now. You're looking at your life, dads, you know, I know I was a dad. I was a single dad with five kids. Um, 
and I had to find time to exercise. If I can find time to exercise with a single dad with five boys, you can do it. And um, uh, it is important as a father that uh, you do that for yourself, but also the fact that your family, there are others that are looking at you for guidance, support, and all the other things in society, and you want to be the best you. And I have someone in Eric that will assist you to become the best you. And being the best you is not easy. If it was, everyone would have been the best you. Being the best you is going to take discipleship. And to have someone that is able to watch over you as a sage, as they say, and hold you accountable to your behavior, your words, keep you honorable to yourself, you're going to achieve it. And I have, I'm going to provide everything for Eric because you guys need this. I was a dad, man. So I know the, I understand about time. As I said, I had to cook, feed, get dressed. All these guys, they were little boys and I had to take care of them. And yet I found time for myself. Complacency is one of the greatest enemies of us. And so I want to talk to all you guys that are complacent. Don't do it. Call, get into Eric's space, ask for help. And I promise you, he will help you. Why? Because he was there. And he's a dad. He knows how to get you to where you need to be faster than you would be able to get you there. That's what he is. And so I, uh, so here you are, Eric. You are in this space now where you're serving. You recognize, as you mentioned earlier, you said your, your daughter became one of your compass. The fact that you wanted to uh, gain certain things, you have all these different compass. I want you to talk to someone uh, that is listening to us that is in that space. We know how it is, the programming. We work so hard. We come home. We are tired, right? Because we're plugged into the system and we are not doing the right, putting in the right fuel and all the different things in the body. And so we're, we're done. We're spent, bro. Talk to that person because that's where most of us live. How... Yeah. Can you talk Absolutely. to that individual right there to begin to uh, input a different um, mindset, a different perception, perception, if you will, to get them to stand up to take that first step? Totally. I, w I would say, look, we're going to rebuild you as the pillar of your family. You know, your kids and, you know, everyone in your family already looks up to you. But let's change that. Let's change it to where when you walk in a room with your kids and everyone else around goes, wow, that dad's fit. Something yeah. dif different about that dad when he comes in the <laughs> room, right? But, you know, in order to get there, you need a goal or when or why. Yeah. You've got to drop the excuses. You've got to get rid of the ego. You've got to be okay with someone telling you that's an excuse. You can't do that again. That's an excuse. Don't do that again. But, you know, yeah. you also be coachable, right? But in order to do all that, you know, at some point, Ken, you got to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to be sick and tired of losing. You got to be sick and yeah. tired of not feeling energetic. You got to be sick and tired of maybe looking at yourself saying, wow, this shirt never was this tight. Or why do yeah. I got to keep buying bigger clothes, right? Or why don't I have the energy to go uh, to my kid's ball game or go on a walk in the evening or whatever it is, right? Why are you sick and tired? If you're not sick and tired, it's a little harder to motivate you. Can we do it? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But being coachable is a, a key thing, right? You know, if, you, if you're coming from a position of you're lost, you don't know what to do, be coachable. Because what I see Ken a lot is someone, people want to start breaking down the coach's plan. Yeah. You know, hey, why would we do this? Why would we do that? You know, it's good to ask questions, but just sometimes you got to just execute the plan, right? Yep. And don't think about how long it's going to take. Think about everyday journey, right? If you wait three months, yeah. you could have you could have already had three months of work done, right? Mm -hmm. And 
you know, you're going to walk away with lifelong skills. You're going to walk away with knowledge about fitness, knowledge about nutrition. And this is information you can pass down to your kids. Maybe maybe your kids get involved in some of your fitness routines. Maybe, you know, right now when I'm doing push-ups in the morning, Ken, my daughter's right there going, hey, you know, this, is, this looks cool. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, what's my dad doing? You know? Yeah. And, you know, one thing is, though, I put out my whole story. I put out everything I do on Instagram, right? My morning yeah. routine, the gym routine, the macros, the, the nutrition, the family life, right? And how it all is an umbrella encompassing into I built the best version of me and this is this is the, 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 the ROI, right? Yeah. And the nice thing about ROI on fitness and health is it can show up right away, but it lasts over a long term period, right? Yeah. And you know, the main thing is for someone thinking about, hey, I need to do something, I don't know what to do, seek out someone of knowledge, Ken, like we were just talking about, to help you, mm -hmm. right? And also, you know, I, I hear, you know, this comes up too, well, this is, Ken, this looks expensive. Well, yeah. how, how, how expensive is the bar on the weekend, right? Oh, yeah. How expensive is that journey down the down the alcohol aisle at the uh, at the at the supermarket or the, at the the liquor store, right? You know, like how expensive is this uh, eating unhealthy, right? Because you can yeah. continue to eat unhealthy, and you're going to end up with a doctor one day. You know what the doctor is going to tell you? Hey, buddy, you need to course correct. Yeah, you're going to go talk to a nutritionist. You're going to learn about some different ways to eat. So why not do it all now, right? And over life, you know, Ken, there's, there's ample studies, muscle powers health. The more muscle you have on your skeletal system as you get older, the better off you are, right? Especially yeah. if you take a fall or something happens to you, right? The, just, the, there's just too many pros to this, yeah. to this whole thing, you know? Well, yeah, there's lots of benefits for that because I, I worked in skilled nursing facility where um, the elderly were there and you knew who was going to recover faster. Um, just looking at them, a couple of things I would tell people, um, the mindset is one. Uh, I've seen people get a stroke, walk into, I'm talking people in the 70s and 80s, uh, but their mind was pretty strong. And when you go in and look at their li life, they were either athletes, weight training, <laughs> that kind of mindset was there. And when they got into that rehab center, they would be coming out in weeks. And then I've had family come and ask me, how long is it gonna take? And I would look at them and said, uh, talk to them about their parent or, uh, mindset, because that's the key in everything. And you guys heard uh, um, Eric talking about it. Um, get your let me give you guys some advice. When it when I changed that approach, everything changed. I, I looked at uh, that as a lifestyle, not as just working out I, or, or that kind of thing. I look at it as this is my new lifestyle. So now when I approach it that way as my new lifestyle, the results that we look for when we are working out, trying to get into you know, that type of thing, we're looking, if we don't see it in three days, we, 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 we tell Eric it's not working and we leave, not understanding that um, it's going to take you some time. But if you have the, the, the belief and the, the outlook that it's a, um, you know, this is a lifestyle, you're not rushing about that type of stuff. But the results is happening but when you approach it as a lifestyle. You're patient. You're more relaxed. It changes your mindset and how you come and how you show up. You're not going in and telling them, I don't see any pecs in two days, you know, and you, you, you're becoming combative because that's not what it's about. He's about teaching you micro, macro, eating habits, all these things. That, guys, is a mindset. And so we're going to make everything available for our TV guys to get to him because you need to get there, as I said, uh, he's here. He's a guide. Uh, he, he has been in the uh, jungles. He's been in the forest. 
and he knows how to get out. He knows a couple of tricks that you have no knowledge about. And we'll make sure that we have all of his information so you guys can have access to him. Eric, I want to thank you for this conversation coming Thursday and like me. I'm going to bring you back so we can delve into some more stuff as um, uh, as uh, uh, we get into the nitty gritty. Yeah? We didn't get into the nitty gritty. And I love talking about the, the nuts and bolts, if you will. But sure. I want to thank you so much for coming to Threads of Enlightenment and sharing your wisdom, your knowledge, and your insights, man. Thanks, Ken. It's been a pleasure to share, you know, my, my journey and then, you know, kind of where I'm at nowadays, helping helping folks just create the best version of themselves. And uh, look forward to coming back as well. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Definitely, man. Thank you.